appreciate that. Uh, hello, Coach. Uh, thanks for doing this. Um, I think it's an obvious question, uh, given that you haven't been able to uh, get all the guys together on the field. Uh, has this uh, virtual thing worked for you? And do you feel like you're a little bit behind when you hit training camp? Yeah, I mean, it's been a unique offseason. And, uh, you know, it's been a, a challenge for everybody in America, really. Uh, so, you know, um, under the circumstances, I think we've done the best we could possibly do. And uh, I really think the players have done a great job of embracing uh, that mindset. And I think we've been able to, in some cases, uh, because of the extra meeting time and whatnot, really slow things down for some of our younger players and um, take, take our time teaching certain things. So I think from a mental standpoint, it's been uh, A plus. You know, nothing, nothing, there's, there is no substitute for uh, on the field work. So, um, you know, losing that time on the field is what it is. Every team's dealt with it. And uh, now we can move forward into training camp and really be smart with how we allocate our time and, um, you know, allocate our resources and, and the decisions we make uh, so that we can accelerate uh, our performance on the field as quickly as possible. I think it'll be uh, it'll be unique, but uh, I think once we can get out there and get going, I think it'll it'll uh, work itself out. Thank you. This is Jameson from uh, ESPN. Uh, obviously, with Lamar coming off a uh, MVP season, having a great great year last year, what have you been trying to focus on? Is there a particular area uh, that you've been trying to focus on with him uh, as far as improvement this off season? Well, Lamar's still. Uh, relatively a young player. I think, uh, you know, this will be his second year as a full-time starter. And uh, I think really all aspects of his game, he was able to really uh, look into uh, with, a, with a critical eye and uh, really, really discuss certain things. And I think, I think it's been very valuable for him. So I don't know that it was just one thing. Um, I think it's been really everything. And uh, he's done a really good job of of uh, staying engaged and, um, you know, communicating really well. I think there's a lot of little things that he really became aware of um, as he was able to look at the body of work he's put out so far. So um, to answer your question, I think it's really a lot of things, not, not one specifically. Hey, Thank Coach, uh, Ty Carpenter from SI. How much have you had to overhaul the playbook this season with trying to stay ahead of the competition? Or has that been a challenge because of not being able to get together with the players? Definitely. Um, you know, we kind of have our internal um, process every year. You know, we get rid of this. We might add something. Um, there's some things that we practiced last year that we didn't actually run in games. So we really wanted to evaluate all that. Uh, I think we've definitely tweaked things. Um, you know, we haven't had the luxury of the OTAs and whatnot to, to really kind of test run certain things. So we've got to be really uh, judicious with how we use that time in training camp, um, you know, to experiment. I mean, I think experimenting this year is going to be, um, you know, it's going to be very selective. So, yes, definitely we've tweaked, we've added updated um but um how much we experiment in training camp uh we're really gonna have to be selective with that hey coach uh it's kirk McEwen from 98 rock i don't know if i've ever seen a transformation from year one to year two body type that hollywood brown has gone through i'm wondering what have you thought about his transformation and uh it, it looks incredible to me i think last year we were all all of us to a man were saying um, wow, once, once Hollywood has a, an off season, a real off season, um, wow, that's going to be something. So I think we're going to see that this year, you know, he's been working really hard. Uh, he's not, uh, dealing with cer certain aspects, uh, uh, that he's de had to deal with last year. And he did a great job of fighting through that and battling through it. And he was frustrated at times, but he, he really managed those frustrations and, diverted those towards being productive. So that was a really, real good sign of maturity. 
And uh, I really think he's uh, had a great off season physically and uh, very excited about what that, you know, what that looks like this year. Uh, can't wait to get the ball rolling. Thank you. Hey, Coach, it's uh, Jerry Coleman from 105.7 The Fan. Listen, this is the first time a lot of us have had a chance to speak with you since the Tennessee game. And I know it's five months old, but looking back on it, Coach Harbaugh has answered the questions. Uh, did you feel like the team got away from what made them successful, what made you guys successful for 14 of 16 games? And what I'm referring to is the number of dropbacks for Lamar and the lack of handoffs to the running backs. Yeah, I think it kind of, it's like what came first, the chicken or the egg. I think once the game, uh, uh, the score kind of got out of hand on us, uh, that's when things really flipped from a balanced attack to a more aggressive attack. Um, you know, a game like that, um, to, as a coach, you always blame yourself first. You always look inwards. You know, you always want to push the right buttons and pull the right levers. Um, so, you know, I certainly, I'm the first person I look at when that happens. And, uh, but it's really a function of uh, a lot of the little things that we did during the regular season. Uh, we just didn't execute at a high enough level. Uh, very simple things. Uh, very correctable things, but very important things that we uh, generally hang our hats on. So, um, you know, that's a great learning experience, and uh, it's, it behooves us to learn from it, move on, and, and get even better moving forward. Hey, Greg, Pete Gilbert here with WBAL. Good morning. Thanks for doing this. And when you look at traditionally, you guys haven't had four running backs uh, you know, on, available on a game day with the four that you have there now, certainly you would ex be easy to expect them all to be there for you. Uh, it's, is that a good problem to have? Cause you've got a lot of talent there, but it is still challenging, right? To keep everyone happy. Well, I love good problems. Uh, I think I've learned over the years, if you got good problems, bring them this way. Um, and I say that unabashedly, um, Talented, hardworking players that love football, bring them on. And the fact that, uh, you know, we've got a lot of guys in our running back stable, if you will, um, it just makes me excited to no end. And, uh, you know, I don't think you can have enough really good running backs. And uh, we've certainly got uh, a plethora of them. And uh, I'm really excited to see JK. And, uh, I love the guys we already have, you know, uh, Mark, Gus, and Justice. And, uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll find ways to, to make, make it work for sure. And, uh, you know, to have that kind of backfield is a blessing. And, uh, you know, we uh, definitely want to get into training camp and, uh, and work through it and kind of evolve as we go as far as how we're actually going to um, deploy them and you know who are we going to emphasize how I think that's going to going to happen on the fly every day in training camp and we'll get a better feel for that but um, I love problems like that so I mean that sincerely. Greg, hey Greg it's Ryan Mink from BaldwinRavens.com. Uh, the wide receiver spot opposite Hollywood how do you look at that and the, and the steps that Miles Boykin, you know, you expect him to take in year two? And, and do you see Willie Sneed and, and Duvernay as guys who can also play outside, you know, in, in that kind of number two role? Yeah, um, you know, we've got uh, two, new, two new guys um, in, uh, in Duvernay and Prochet, and we're really excited about them. I know – uh, we heard really good things from the guys at the workouts down in Florida. Um, so it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun to get on, the, get on the grass with them. And then Miles Boykin, you mentioned, uh, really going to uh, load his plate a lot more this year. Um, you know, and really uh, ask a lot of him this year. We really feel like he's going to take a, a giant step. You know, I think Willie Sneed is a, a Swiss Army knife in his own right. He does so many things for us at a high level. I mean, he's one of the most physical receivers in the NFL. Um, you know, he was a big part of our uh, rushing attack last year uh, that set all those records. Um, it really, all the receivers were. Uh, but, uh, 
yeah, we're really excited to see how that unfolds. And, uh, you know, we're going to use multiple personnel groups. So um, everybody's going to have different roles on different plays. And that's one of the messages we've talked about. And we'll talk about our first day back. Uh, you know, we're going to be a very multiple offense. You might see three, four tight ends on the field. You might see five wides on the field. Uh, the next play, you might see, you know, something completely different. And everybody's going to have an important role. And, um, you know, how we build the, uh, you know, the overall attack week to week will be different. But one thing is for sure, we're going to be multiple with how we deploy personnel. So um, the more the merrier and uh, really excited to get to work with those guys. Hey, Greg, this is uh, Aaron Kaznitz at, at Penn Live. Um, obviously, with the recent events, Colin Kaepernick has been back in the news lately, and, and I know you've talked about him in the past, but but considering all that's going on, what would it mean to you personally, and, and what do you think it might mean to, to the league and the country if if he were to you know return and, and be on a team this year? Yeah, I mean, um, I had a great, a great experience working with Colin, and uh, you know, I certainly wish him the best. And uh, I'm hopeful for, uh, for him, if, if that's what he chooses to do, uh, to, to get back and play. I don't, I don't know exactly where he's at with that or where every team in the league is, you know. Uh, but, you know, one thing's for sure, I'm always rooting for him. Um, Colin was a, uh, uh, just a treat to coach. And, uh, you know, I wish him the best. So however that goes, it goes. And uh, I'm certainly in his corner rooting for him. Greg, this is Jeff Zerebeck from The Athletic. Given the fact that, you you know, you guys set a bunch of records offensively last year um, and just the thought of all these teams having all this time to study you guys now and, and John's been very clear about kind of having to, you know, keep pushing forward on the offense so you don't let defenses catch up. What kind of – is that a fine line for you to – you know, not make too many changes and, and stray away from what worked so well last year while wanting to keep evolving as an offense? I think that that's uh, very well put. I mean, um, there are certain things that, you know, you, you definitely, what I've learned over the years is you've got to be good at something. You've got to be really, really good at something. Uh, and after you get really, really good at something, you want to get good, really, really good at a few things. And you keep building on that. So that's kind of what we aim to do. Um, you know, how our new personnel fits together, I think will naturally shift us a little bit. Um, it won't be the same, but uh, we're going to keep pushing the envelope. And, um, you know, this year it might be an interesting year as far as stats and records and whatnot. Maybe it's not a stats and record year around the league just because of the nature of how things are right now. We'll see. We just don't know. Um, the important thing is, is that uh, we keep moving towards playing winning football and developing our overall attack, getting better and, uh, you know, playing winning football. Um, that's going to be incumbent upon every man when they uh, get back to work and training camp. Uh, you know, every day is going to be incredibly important, um, you know, as is their training period from now until then to show up in the best shape of their life. And, uh but uh, it's an interesting question that kind of, that's something I think about every day, uh, at least once a minute. And, uh, you know, how we're going to kind of put things together, how it's going to look a little different. And, uh, you know, especially in a season like this, um, you don't want to get too far off the rails. Uh, you got to kind of stay on the rails and, and be selective with, with what you want to do differently. Hey, Greg, this is uh, Aaron Kaznitz at Penn Live again. I don't think we've really talked to you uh, much this offseason since Marshall Yonda um, had retired. How would you assess that entire interior of the offensive line now? And, and you, how are you, you kind, of, kind of viewing your options to replace him now? Well, uh, you know, Mar you know, I saw pictures of Marshall recently. I, I, I just – maybe he can come back and be a fullback. I mean, uh, I mean, he's lost like 65 pounds. I barely recognize him. He looks great. Um, but uh, losing him, you can't just replace Marshall Yonda. Uh, you know, you, you know, the guys that we have, uh, we, we believe in, and uh, th there's going to be a real competition there. 
to see how that all unfolds. You know, we've got a lot of different options and uh, we're, everybody's got the opportunity, you know, and uh, the best five guys will play. Um, uh, we got some young guys that we just drafted, uh, some, you know, free agents, and we've got veterans that we believe in. So uh, how all that unfolds, you know, it's going to be really interesting, but uh, uh, the, the opportunity's there. And, so, you know, somebody's got to grab the brass ring, so to speak, and uh, go for it. And uh, not just one, but multiple guys, because uh, you can never have enough, really, uh, in that uh, offensive line, interior offensive line, too, where things happen so quick and continuity uh, does matter because guys are working together uh, with all that quickness down in, on the inside. So um, it's going to be, it's going to be a competition, a process, a day-to-day -day process. And uh, I like where we're at. And uh, you know, once we get out there, we'll kind of see where it goes. Hey, hey, Greg, it's Garrett uh, Downing here from the Ravens. Um, just going back to Lamar, what do you see? It's hard to get much better than an MVP season, but what do you see as the next step in his evolution? Well, the next step for, for, for Lamar is just, um, you know, I, I've kind of said this before, as the quarterback position in the National Football League, one of the hardest, probably the hardest position to play in all of sports, uh, in, in my opinion. But uh, there are so many pictures, like a, a graph of uh, all these different charts and every chart, like a, a, a bar graph. And there's, you know, 50, 60 things where, you know, every day you're kind of measured in each category at. And if you can get all 50 of those up 2%, 3%, now you're a much better player at the end of the day. So uh, just continuing to evolve his overall game. Um, I think there's a magic to uh, his style and how he plays, uh, some creativity. Um, and we always want to focus that, that creativity and that, that uh, energy into winning football, you know, and winning football decisions on the field, accuracy, timing, vision, all those things. So just a, a constant, um, steady, slow, steady, upward tick in all those different categories. I mean, there's certain things we want to work on and emphasize more, you know, throwing the ball in different parts of the field, for example. But, uh, you know, uh, we're always going to try to, you know, be aware of and push the envelope in all those different areas to try to get that, those bar graphs, you know, moving up. Uh, so, and then, you know, when the game rolls around, we're going to do what we're good at and what we want to do. So, um, but we, we, really, we, you know, as part of his development, chase to, chase to being great and chase to improve, you know, you're, you're working on all these things all the time. So I don't know that I would say it's one thing, but everything. Hey, Greg, it's Luke Jones with WNST. Uh, with Hayden Hurst being traded in the offseason and knowing how much you use the tight ends in this offense, wanted to get your impressions about the younger guys, Breland, uh, Wolf, and even Charles Scarf, who was on the practice squad last year. Yeah, the opportunity looms. I mean, it's there for those guys. And, uh, you know, Eli, you know, uh, Breland, and uh, Charles, um, you know, they're all going to have an opportunity. Uh, it's real and uh, you know they're gonna have to come in those are guys I was referring to as well as everybody else you know once we get out there I mean they got to maximize every single day uh, you know to, for us to see what they can do for them to improve and for us to see where they fit in the grand scheme of things so uh, we're really excited about all three of those young guys opportunities there for them and uh, you know we'll see where it goes but um, you know, I think they have a real legitimate chance to uh, make a positive impact on this team. Okay, we'll have one more question for Coach Roman, please. Uh, Coach Pete Gilbert here again. As you, you know, you get day to day, you get into the season, and it's hard to really reflect on what's going on big picture. But when you think back to the 2019, the regular season, and what was accomplished, and the way it was accomplished, particularly with Lamar leading it, what what strikes you the most about that year? And is it anything you've ever, as a coach, kind of could have imagined? You know, the thing that strikes me is just the, uh, 
the the spirit attitude the com the competitive spirit of of all these guys the teamwork the selflessness um just the um support everybody gave one another um and you know going into our opener of the 2019 season there was a lot of doubters uh there was a lot of people that legitimately had a lot of question marks on what this was going to look like was it e going to even work was it going to fall flat on its face uh that was real that was uh, tangible and uh it was it was a big question mark so um i think a statement was made by these guys early on and uh, their ability to push forward through the season you know we had a couple bumps in the road which are going to happen and uh just the way they hung together and uh battled for one another i think um you know kind of spoke for itself so i think that overall um experience of 2019 was was really you know hey, is this thing even going to work? What's this going to look like? That was kind of the feel I was getting. And uh, I think everybody kind of answered those questions uh, very loudly and, and proudly. And, uh, you know, aside from that, just the spirit of teamwork amongst these guys, you know. So I think we got a lot of character on this team. We got a lot of guys that really care about one another. And I think that's really going to uh, – really help us move forward into 2020. Coach, thank you again for your time today. We really appreciate it. And uh, to all the media members, we're going to send you to the waiting room and have uh, Coach Chris Horton here uh, get all set up and we'll invite you back in. So again, Coach, thank you. Thank you very much, everybody.